has peaked in 1957. But in 2016, long before the birth of the so-called hardest mod pack in Minecraft, a man known as Dream Master would create what would become one of the most infamous packs in the now observable universe, with only a few knowing about its existence. Its name. This will be the only Greg Tech New Horizons episode. A sprinkling of individuals have proposed an investigation. It all began when the user known as Gregorius T created a Minecraft modification called Greg Tech. As the name implies, it allowed players to simulate the mechanized insurgency and its multitudinous aftermaths in Minecraft. But Gregorius T wasn't stopping there. He added realistic electricity, fusion reactors, guns, oil, magic, realistic chemistry, logistics, electronics, gaming. And last but not least, as one player put it, Greg Tech had everything, of everything. Fast forward a few years and Greg Tech had accumulated a reputation of being one of Minecraft's most challenging mods. But what if Greg Tech could somehow become even more cluttered and challenging with more redundant objects and psychological torture tactics? Now introducing, Greg Tech New Horizons. Compiled by Dream Master Extra Extra Large and his assemblage of acquaintances. Their plan, was to install several more challenging industry-related mods, add one of the most convoluted magic mods, integrate space exploration of the entire loco bubble, and sprinkle more mods on top. Approximately 200, to be exact. The second phase of the plan was program several bajillion grams number amounts of changes and additional content to make Group Tech New Horizons one of the most challenging and time-consuming mod packs in all of existence. Getting anything in Minecraft needed realistic and researched processes. Except with 20 different random obstacles on top for everything. The amount of time it took to beat the Stone Age would take the approximate amount of time it took humanity to proceed into the Bronze Age. And so by the transitive property, the same time consumption applied for every stage of the game up until futuristic galactic colonization magic fusion genetic engineering and the symbolic final goal to complete in the game, was the Stargate. The most expensive structure to build, with each part needing millions or even billions of all sorts of more advanced futuristic techno babble science fiction components, each requiring their own slew of ingredients in the magical, fictional, realistic, and futuristic realms that drew from resources all across the universe and all across the plane of existent possible theoretical machines and multi-blocks and chemistry and mining and farming and extracting and electronics and micro micro and thus, the Stargate became a symbol of futility and hopelessness. But with extreme challenges, come attempts from challengers. Greg Tech New Horizons became well known in the modded community for its sheer size and complexity. Hundreds of thousands of souls have been lured into Group Tech New Horizons by its ever-expanding infamous reputation. And the few most hardened survivors went on to build the most sprawling, detailed, advanced, insert another buzzword, and long-lasting bases in all of video gaming, to keep up with the industrial demands of Group Tech New Horizons. These bases dwarf the strongholds of 2B2T and the creations of any other MMO. But in response to the possibility that someone might actually obtain the Stargate over the past few years, Dream Master and the Greg Tech Mafia have been constantly updating the mod pack to make it more and more challenging to do anything. And the elusive Stargate staggered farther and farther away from the grasp of the most experienced and skilled players in the community. But after all these years, we have learned a valuable lesson. Perhaps Group Tech New Horizons was not meant to be beaten. Because the journey itself was the whole point of the experience, and the journey was supposed to be a never-ending experience of improving the factory. And Group Tech New Horizons was not a miserable experience if played correctly. Its insanely dedicated community have published several pentacontillion articles of information on how to most commendably perform Group Tech recent skylines. Because even though Group Tech New Horizons tended to be horrendously grindy even for simple tasks, there was complexity in using methods to avoid the grind and optimize the factory. In other words, even though anyone could play this and make progress, this was a much better experience for high IQ players who saw beyond the grind. 
which is why there are so many players who list Grotek New Horizons as the best mod pack of all time for its unique challenges, while those who only see obstacles tend to be not so enthusiastic. Now this is where I come in. I shall begin an indefinite Greg Tech New Horizons series alongside the current Nomi Factory series. But this is only because I have been invited to a Group Tech New Horizon server by the infamous Hypixel Skyblock Mafia gang organization known as Guild Age. This Greg Tech New Horizons team consists of the Hypixel Skyblock players known as, not a good name aka The Realm 7, Hello Fish aka Croppy Perm, Demit aka Demit, Zoss from Infamous Trouble Brewing, and Pog Soul from Minecraft Manhunt. This group had somehow put up with Hypixel Skyblock, and had beaten the entirety of Divine Journey 2 in just a few weeks. In other words, this player group is decently competent. And they had pulled on some mysterious connections to entice me into their excursion into Group Tech New Horizons. So I shall now cover our excursion into Group Tech New Horizons. Since no footage exists of the very beginning of this Greg Tech New Horizons playthrough, the beginning shall be told by oral tradition. The seed was, for a lack of a worse word, the worst. The lack of practical, realistic, or real resources in the general vicinity of spawn was a major setback. So me and the squad began searching the area for a suitable location to set up the base. The main thing we were looking for, was a place with high humidity, since the water drilling pump works best in wet biomes, and we shall consume a lot of water during the self-explanatory steam age. But one player took exploration too far. It is a well-known fact that Group Tech New Horizons has a severely buffed hunger mechanic. Any action except for walking will burn 500 million calories. The only way to escape this, was theoretically to eat constantly. But this was an incorrect postulation. Because the evil developers had added the Spice of Life mod to the mod pack. This means that you can only eat a certain amount of foods until they become stale and provide no nourishment. There was also Pam's Harvest Craft which added natural spawning gardens that dropped tens of different snacks when destroyed. But these could only satisfy us for so long. The only way to reliably stay well fed, was by obtaining and holding the healing axe which gave infinite saturation. But this needed unstable ingots. And this is where D4 comes in. His plan, was to loot dungeons for the materials needed to make the unstable ingots. More specifically, diamonds, iron, and the division sigil from dungeons. As it turns out, there were many loot-filled structures throughout the multiverse that could be raided for a chance at becoming rich. But this sigil wasn't the only thing that could be located in dungeons. Dungeon loot also included various metals and equipment made out of those metals. D4 swore to never give up until he found the parts for the healing axe due to his abhorrence of hunger. Which is why he raided approximately 180 dungeons. He did not find what he was looking for. But in the process of failing, he succeeded at another task. He had found so many other things that we were now rich not only in iron and diamonds, but also all sorts of other periodic table elements, such as copper and zinc, as well as alloys such as stainless steel and steel. Usually the way to get resources in the beginning was to locate the so-called ore chunks and dig straight down to find Greg Tech ore veins, which are much larger than in vanilla. But D4 had allowed us to completely skip this. So not only did we get beginner equipment from this, we got the base resources needed to industrialize. Anyways it was time for the next phase of the gaming. Me, the Realm 7, and Croppy Perm had found a good humid spot next to an ocean and a forest filled with wood. Since the Hunger Axe expeditions had failed, we were forced to grow food like absolutely normal people. This included carrots and gardens that I had collected, which would spread to other tiles on their own. This was overpowered when combined with the fact that the server would run 24-7, which led to complete garden takeover. Next to the farm was a graveyard for all the lost souls. And the base was expanded into the ocean through cherry wood bridges, which branched off into even more farms and a house with basically nothing in it. Because we slept outside anyways. With a base of operations set up, it was time to do some gaming. There were two main goals for now beat the stone age and get the healing acts 
Even though we couldn't get unstable ingots, there was another tested proven tried and tested method of getting the axe. This method was found by extensive analysis of watching threefold. Apparently in the quest book, there is a way to buy a healing axe in a trade. The cost, was a few of every garden type, a monstrous amount of tofu, and some expensive food that needed all of the above. So D4 had changed his exploration goals from burglarizing dungeons to burglarizing gardens from nature. And the aforementioned farms grew a combination of bell pepper, soybeans, and chili peppers, which originally originated from the gardens on the base. These would be periodically harvested to be processed into sacrifices to be made to buy the healing axe. In the meantime, the Realm 7 and Tropi Perm began grinding through the Stone Age. Obviously we had to collect several handfuls of stone, clay, sand and gravel. These were to be crafted into these tan brown bricks, which could be compounded into actual coke bricks. 26 of these in a platonic solid formation would create the coke oven structure, capable of burning wood to produce charcoal and a byproduct of creosote oil. Both of which were extremely flammable. Speaking of wood, crops were not the only organisms that were subjugated for human use. Sacred oak trees, aka the largest trees in the entire game, were discovered near headquarters. The Realm 7 attempted to clear it by burning it to the ground, which resulted in several tree pieces hanging in the air. This was a disaster. But we obtained sacred oak saplings. Which could be planted to spontaneously spawn hundreds of wood into reality. So we began farming sacred oak trees and stockpiled thousands of its sacred wood. But these scared trees were not the only victim of industrialization. Rubber trees were also located in the general vicinity. And Croppy Perm proceeded to harvest its saplings to be replanted in a rectangular grid, feeding off untreated sea water. The result, is we could collect the sticky resin from these trees with a tree tap, which could be used in creating rubber. In the meantime, 26 water tank sightings were made from wood from the nearby forest, iron rods, and the previously obtained sticky resin, which would form the water pump once assembled into a cube. With absolutely no input, it mysteriously began collecting water from the surrounding reality. This was necessary since infinite water was disabled in this mod pack. With water and flammable charcoal, it was time to produce steam to power the machinery of the steam age. Using the metallic metals found by D4, several tools ranging from saws to hammers to wrenches could be made. With more metals and tools made from metal, the metal could be worked into several different material parts, which could be crafted into machine parts, which were finally put together into machines. And the first machine made, was the small coal boiler, thus unlocking the steam age. The way the factory shall work is that sacred oak logs shall be fed into the coke ovens for practically infinite charcoal. Charcoal and water are then fed into the boilers to turn water into steam. With the usage of some basic copper pipes, this steam could be used to power the first machines in the game. Steam machinery. These included the steam extractor, steam crusher, steam alloy smelter, and a few notable mentions. There were machines for every industrial process imaginable from alloying to melting to assembling to shaping to magnetic long eroding. But for now, these machines will be used to process food to buy the healing axe. Since the questline for the Stone Age was complete, we could reap the rewards for completion. Most of these so-called rewards were nourishing meals ranging from Subway sandwiches to other sandwiches, which would slow us down from starving to death. In the meantime, I go by lots of names and Pog Soul began making progress towards making the advanced foods for the healing axe, while D4 was hunting the last gardens and had already made all the tofu to be sacrificed. All of the loot from dungeon exploration, quest rewards and all other industrial activities was dumped into this absolutely garbage storage system with absolutely no law or order. So locating anything required searching through all the chests to find what we needed. And this would sometimes lead to an infinite loop of searching if the chests didn't have it. In the meantime, hostile mobs were not so pleased about our industrialization. Grudgetech New Horizons contained the Infernal Mobs and Hardcore Darkness mod, a mod designed by genuine psychopaths to inflict as much psychological damage as possible on players. Once night came, 
the world was covered in impenetrable darkness, as various fucked mobs descended onto reality. The usual skeletons, zombies and creepers could now come with various character traits including making everything burn, and a few were mini-bosses as well. But the champion of them all, was the water creeper. Once it explodes, it leaves behind a giant ball of monster egg cobblestone with water inside. Cleaning this up requires dealing with all the trapped silverfish, some of which came in mini-boss form as well. And the water inside had to be blocked up. One badly timed water creeper led to the loss of half an hour of emergency repairs. But we marched onwards. We were making good progress towards making all the food. Punk Soul had finished up the beef wellington tasks, and I had just obtained enough hearty breakfasts. The rainbow curry, supreme pizza and delighted meals were mostly found by deep foreign dungeons, with a few being made from normal methods. This left the sausage and bread, which needed, among other things, maple syrup and spice leaf. And the only way to get the spice leaf was the spice garden, which D4 still had to locate. Time was running out fast. The mobs continued attacking the base. Morale and resources slowly drained as we awaited the return of D4. When one day, chaos broke loose as starving players began hiring hits on themselves so they could respawn with less hunger. But then, in humanity's darkest hour, D4 returned with the Spice Garden. The final piece of my plan. There was a chance that I would obtain the fabled Spice Leaf upon breaking this. So I took my chances. Using the coins from earlier, I bought maple saplings to grow maple wood to extract maple syrup in the steam extractor. I then quickly put together all the ingredients needed for the sausage and bread. Maple sausage. Ketchup. Bread. Onions. Sausage and bread. These were then thrown to D4, who had all the things needed to buy the healing axe. He then bought the healing axe. Now here's the thing. Multiple people can share quest progress by being in the same quest D. So when D4 unlocked the healing axe in the quest book, everyone on the same team could collect it as well. So the entire team was now free from hunger. Gone were the days of eating. Here were the days of holding this ghostly white axe. And after this, the team could divert their attention from the kitchen, to the factory, in later episodes. And the Realm 7 was about to go insane. Like and subscribe for more gaming. And shout out to the channel members of the past.